Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah Our praise belongs to Allah and we send peace and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Alhamdulillah we have our brother here, Javante, may Allah azza wa jalla preserve him and bless him as many of you know that he embraced Islam, Alhamdulillah and he's a Muslim and I just wanted to talk about something that's very important and beneficial the attribute that he chose, the name that he chose as a Muslim is Abdul Wahid and it means the servant of the one. From the names of Allah, the names of God is Al-Wahid, the one. And that's a beautiful name. Abdul Wahid. That's a beautiful name. Why is it such a beautiful name? Because we have in the Quran, yes, no doubt. Al-Wahid is the name of God, the one. The servant of the one. Allah said in the Quran, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah, he is one. He is one in his lordship, he is one in his beautiful names and his perfect attributes. He is one in his right to be worshipped alone. He is one. God is one. And that's the beauty of Islam. We believe in one God, we worship one God. The Lord of all of the prophets and the messengers. The Lord of Adam, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, every prophet. The Lord of all of the creation. The Lord of the heavens and the earth. And we worship him alone. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say he is Allah, the one. He is one. And look at that, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessing us to be Muslims. Blessing our brothers to embrace Islam. Islam, it teaches us to be the best version of who we are. To try and complete ourselves. Because as Muslims, we want to complete ourselves. Yes, but also, we have to help those who are around us. And mashallah, the brother, he invested in the area that he's from. We see that that's something that we're trying to do also in Philadelphia. Why? To help others that are around us. Yes, it is necessary that one, that we have a correct state of heart. Our heart is correct, it's healthy. Likewise, our mind. How do we keep our mind healthy as Muslims? Who can tell me? By eating healthy food. <laughs> yes, okay, what else? No, what else though? Well, how do we keep our, health, my, our minds healthy? Yes, what else though? What do we stay away from? No, what else? What else? No, what else? No doubt, 100%, but what else? No, what else? For your mind, something that is going to affect your mind. No, what else? Drugs. Drugs, alcohol. Why? Because we need our heart. Yes, we purify the heart from any false belief. Shirk, any corrupt aqeedah. Yes, that's with the statement, La ilaha illallah, naam, purify the heart. Also, we purify our mind. We keep our mind right. Also, our bodies. Naam. Our souls. Why? Because we want to be the best version of who we are. But also we want to help those who are around us. And all of us, our brother here, Ustad Raha, Nam, even you as the youth of the community, you all have a role. You guys are the future of tomorrow. You guys are going to be the teachers. You're going to be the leaders of tomorrow. You're going to be, whether it's in sports, whatever you choose in life, you're going to be the future of tomorrow. But in order to be the leaders that you can be, you have to be prepared for it. And Islam blesses us. Islam allows us to do that. So that's why I wanted to talk about the name that the brother, he chose. Abdul Wahid, the servant of the one. Because God is in control of everything. And now look, the places, our communities, they need us. No doubt. In order for us to help our communities, we need to be right. We need to be correct. But our communities need us. The young people, they need us. Nam. Even the old people, they need us. But we have to be prepared for the job. It's like the brother, he boxes. When he goes into that ring, he trains. He trains. He trains hard. Physically. I mean, I, I train hard in my house. You train hard? Yeah, your father told me that you like soccer. That's your son, right? Yes. Oh, that's your son there? You like soccer as well? No, that's I your like Sunday. No. 
But we ha look. But my point is this: a person trains now because they prepare for something. Do you know we prepare as well? All of this when we pray, we're training. No doubt. I mean, it's the relationship between us and Allah Azza wa Jal, but and we're fulfilling the obligation of Allah Azza wa Jal. But also, it's training the soul, and you're preparing for the task that is out there because it's not easy. It's not easy. We need to be, have strong hearts. Naam, we need to have our mind sharp. We need to have our bodies, no doubt, fit. Because there's a responsibility out there. And I'm telling you, if you prepare right, you can change the world. All of you, you can change the world. Even though you are young, you have a role and a responsibility. All of you. And we all have roles and responsibilities. And we're all important. Naam, every single one of us, regardless of what we're doing. The person, as I said, who cleans the masjid is important. The one who washes the windows is important. The one who leads the prayer, the one who teaches the classes, all of us have a role. We're all important. We're all brothers. We're all important. Every single one of us have a role. And that's, alhamdulillah, you know, something that we have to recognize and understand. And many people, for the youth, many people, famous people are embracing Islam. Many people are interested my, my in dad, Islam. My dad asks me for help in my helping. MashaAllah, excellent. Look at how many people, subhanAllah. Just the brother who embraced in Saudi, the boxer. What was his name? Nah. Huh? Big, big baby. Big baby. He just recently embraced. Yeah, and he prior to, we know, alhamdulillah, Tyson was Muslim. Before them, Muhammad Ali. How many people, successful, famous people, embracing al Islam? The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said a beautiful thing, right? He said, خِيَارُهُمْ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَّ خِيَارُهُمْ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ The best of those, before they, in the times of ignorance, meaning before they became Muslim, they will be the best in Islam. Meaning, إِذَا فَقِهُ when, If they gain knowledge and understanding of the religion. Meaning, you take, anything that, a quality that you had, you take and you improve it, you take it to a next level. And Islam allows you to do that. To be the best of what you're doing. You want to be a teacher, you be the best teacher. You want to, for example, you want to do, whatever you want to do, you be the best in that. Islam equips us for that. You know, and no doubt, there's no success, success except with the aid and the assistance of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah means what? The one who deserves to be worshipped. Allah in Arabic, God in English. Believe in one God, worship that one God, and try to, try to live our life the best way we can. And we're not going to be perfect, but we all try to the best of our ability. Naam. Barakallah feekum. Alhamdulillah, look, he took time out to come and visit you guys. Why? Because he knows, as the youth, you're important. He's busy. He has things to do. How many people, famous people, have come and visited you? Do you know? I mean, alhamdulillah, he's famous for us, mashallah, tabarakallah. You are, what's his name? Sheikh Raha. Sheikh Raha Yeah, but you guys, alhamdulillah. But how many people outside there, he took his time out to come and visit you, alhamdulillah. As your, you know, as your brother. You know, alhamdulillah. Because again... Same way he's doing work in the community and there's more work for him and there's more work for me and, you know, Sheikh Raha and everybody else. There's work for us to, you know, to, to, to be done. He understands the importance of, you know, the youth and giving you opportunities, whether it's education, whether it's jobs. Now, I'm in also helping protect you from the things that maybe some of the brothers they went through. What did I tell you earlier? Who can remind me? The wise person is who? I told you earlier. Only if you know. Who's the wise person? I told you before they came. Yeah, the wise person is someone who learns from other people's mistakes. The wise person is someone who learns from other people's mistakes. My father told me that. <laughs> Mr. Abdi, right? And it's true. He said the fool is the one who learns from his own mistakes. If I made a mistake in life, I'm going to say, oh, don't make that mistake. He made a mistake in life, he's going to say, don't make that mistake. If Talik made a mistake, he's going to say, don't make that mistake. Charlie, Isa, Abdi, uh, you know, uh, Ustad Raha, Sabur. Just, uh, Justin, our brother Jalil, Abdul Aziz, we're going to say, don't make that mistake. I made that mistake, I don't want you to make it. That's the wise person. He's going to say, you know what? I'm not going to make that mistake. The fool is the one who's going to say, you know what? I hear you, but I just want to make that mistake. Some mistakes you can't come back from. That's the issue. Somebody asked me that, and it was a deep question. I was in Chicago visiting Big Dirk, Abdul Haq, and I went to the, you, you know, the, the place where... He does youth work and he, ha you know, people who have, you know, involved in, for example, certain things, trying to escape that life. And one, somebody asked me that question. They said, but um, what about, you know, the fool if he just says, uh, you know, I want to just experience it. And I, I, it's deep because that's the first time anyone asked me that question. I had to try and think on my toes, you know. And it, I said, then, some mistakes you can't come back from. 
You kill someone, you go to prison for life. You, in, you know, you're in prison for life. Or, or, or you steal. Exactly. Certain mistakes you can't come back from. Or somebody ends up, you get in a car, you know somebody's going to maybe get involved in something and there's guns. And you get in that car and somebody shoots you and you end up dying. You can't come back once you're dead. Meaning in this life. Some mistakes you cannot come back from. Yes, there are mistakes when we make them. Alhamdulillah, we're still living. God is all forgiving. We can all be better. And we all make mistakes. All of us. You know, it doesn't matter who we are. We all make mistakes. And that's the beauty of Islam. When we worship God, we worship God with love. Love of Him. And that keeps us going in our worship of Him. At the same time, hope. Meaning that if we make a mistake, we repent to him and also fear because we know that he may punish us for certain things that we do that are wrong. That's the beauty of this religion. This religion is beautiful. And that's why when our prophet came with it, it didn't just change some individuals, it helped change the world. And Islam, subhanAllah, the beauty of it, how many people from different walks of life accepted it? Black, white, Arab, non-Arab. Even slaves accepted it because they said, this is the truth. There was an individual, one of the best Muslims. It was an Abyssinian slave. He was a slave. And when Prophet Muhammad, look, Prophet Muhammad didn't think that, he didn't look down on, upon people and say, you know, because, you know, I was chosen. No, Prophet Muhammad, when you're righteous and righteous, right, pious people, they never look down on people. They just say, you know, I'm striving to be righteous and I want to help, you know, my, the, the people around me, I want them to be upon what is good. We don't think we're better than anyone. No righteous person think, thinks like that. Prophet Muhammad, he even gave, he invited even the slaves to Islam, and one of them accepted Islam. What was his name? Who could tell me? Who was the Abyssinian slave that accepted Islam in Mecca? Bilal. Bilal, an. Bilal, because he accepted Islam, the pagan Arabs, they used, used to drag him in the streets to try and punish him. Because they didn't want him to be a Muslim. And he, look, he had the courage. That's why I say, he said something, final, like it relates to the name, which is Ajib. And it just came to me. I didn't think about this earlier. When they were dragging Bilal through the streets, right? Dragging him. And they would make him bake in the hot sun. Trying to punish him, to force him to leave the religion. He would say, Ahadun, Ahad. God is one, God is one. Look at that. That's why I said earlier, and there I said, when you have the correct belief, Right? You don't fear no man. And pain, no doubt. All of us have a level, a threshold of pain that we, we may crack. But still at the same time, look at Bilal, he showed us. Making him in, you know, in armor. They would put armor on him and bake him in the sun. And he would say, Ahadun, Ahad. God is one, God is one. And he wouldn't leave the religion. Prophet Muhammad said about him, that he's from the people of paradise. Allah Akbar, look at that. Look how Allah raised him. He was from a slave. He became one of our leaders. That's why Omar said that, you know, he said Abu Bakr is our leader and he freed one of our leaders, meaning Bilal, because one of the Muslims, Abu Bakr, he saw Bilal being tortured and he said, I'm going to free you. And they said, you know, they wanted X amount of money, more than it was. He said, money don't matter because that's my brother. And that's what I'm saying. Money comes and goes. Truth, brotherhood and friendship, you can't buy it. You know, at the end of the day. Money comes and goes, but true brotherhood, you can't buy it. That's why Allah said in the Quran to the Prophet, He said, if you spend everything in the earth, you would not be able to join their hearts, but Allah joined their hearts. Through that statement, La ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. We have an ummah, we have a brotherhood all over this world. Like I said, subhanAllah, brothers reaching out to me, asking about the brother, he doesn't know them, you know, in the Emirates, in Saudi Arabia, in the UK, and these are people, some of them, Naam, alhamdulillah. Some of them in the same, you know, field as the brother and, you know, involved in, you know, some of them doing other things, business people, regular people. We're an ummah. Imagine that. Imagine all of us go to our communities and we have that level, you know, that cooperation and that bond, what we can achieve in our community. We don't wait for government grants. We'll be out there with our, like I said, one of the things, alhamdulillah, we're trying to do in, in Philadelphia, even without, you know, you know, our own, you know, means, alhamdulillah, and, you know, and the skills that we have in changing our communities. Listen, I said to him earlier, some people want to control us. They can't control a man that says, you know, my Lord is Allah. Because that is our Lord. We don't worship any man. Right? And the person that can't be controlled like that. You know, no doubt, alhamdulillah, we obey the laws of God. And we're not people who are chaotic. And, you know, alhamdulillah, we're organized and stuff like that. And we have, we conduct ourselves properly. But imagine what we can achieve with that level of cooperation in the inner cities. If everyone 
with, for example, whether they had money or just a skill, and we came back and we gave to the community, like he's coming back and visiting you guys. Imagine what we could achieve. Okay. Imagine what we can achieve. And that's why the brothers who may listen to this later on, who have wealth or have fame, you're wasting your lives. The devil has a trick that, you know, you know, uh, you know, being in places where you shouldn't be and spending those, making it rain and all those type of things. And I know the youth, they don't know what I'm referring to and that's a good thing. That's the shaitan. They got us, you know, one of our, you know, one, uh, somebody, you know, for example, they got us buying things that are not really going to benefit us in any way, shape or form. But we could change our communities if we take a portion of that back and we all, for example, gave back. And if, even if you don't have money, you got a skill, you went to university, you went back to the community and you taught and you tutored the children. Everyone has a role. I was telling the brothers they have skills skills, mashallah. For example, with some of the technology, we all have a role. Everyone. Every single one of us. Just the fact that a person says, my name is Abdul Wahid, and we heard Bilal say, Ahad and Ahad. That's a powerful message. You know, that's saying, listen, Allah is the greatest. You know, I worship that one God, you know. And again, that doesn't mean any of us are perfect. I'm sitting before you and I'm talking to you. I'm not perfect. What I say is a reminder for me as well. I'm not saying it just, you know, for you. I say it for myself. I need reminders. You know, every, all of us need reminders. We're all brothers. And at the end of the day, that's why, and I'll close with this. I don't want to go on too long. There's a small surah in the Quran. If we just understood it, right? Imam Shafi, he said about it, one of the scholars of Islam, he said, if, the, if people understood it, it would be sufficient for them. What surah is that? Can any of you tell me? Asr. Asr, subhanAllah. Well, how old are you? Oh, wow, Allahu Akbar. Yes, yeah, surah al-Asr. Allah said, Wal Asr, by time. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. All of mankind is in a state of loss. Everyone is in loss. Look, the rich man, the poor man, black man, white man, the king, the one who's just a regular citizen. Allah said, everyone is in loss. Everybody. But then he said, illa, except except those who believe they have correct belief they believe in one God they worship that one God they have the correct belief look and they do righteous deeds they try they try their best to do righteous deeds right so look that's those people they try and complete themselves yeah I want to try and be the best version of me but they're not selfish with it because you all, we all have a role they're not selfish with it they don't say you know I'm doing well I'm not worrying about it. no they say, then Allah said he mentioned what bil haq so in addition to them trying to be the best version of them, the Allah said, and they advise one another with truth. So they go out into the community and they, they advise people with truth. What's going to benefit them? And they advise one another to be patient. Look, completing ourselves, completing, helping our communities. I believe, alhamdulillah, to be honest with you, the things I'm seeing and the people, alhamdulillah, around us, I believe change is coming for our inner cities. May Allah Azza you know, grant us all success and may Allah guide all of the people. Now, uh, that's all I want to say, Alhamdulillah. I don't want to say anything else. Do you have anything that you want to say? Anything? Anybody, Alhamdulillah. Beautiful. This is beautiful, Ikhwan. Historical, Alhamdulillah. May Allah Azza wa bless you. You know, Alhamdulillah, again, you guys are important. You know, when you go home, you look, you say, I'm important. When you see the brother, you say, I met him. Alhamdulillah. That's my brother. You know, Alhamdulillah. If you need help from any of us, you say, that's my teacher, Sheikh Raha. You know, that's our brother, you know, Alhamdulillah, Taliq and Charlie and, you know, Jalil, Justin and Sabur and Abdul Aziz and Isa and everyone else. And then I see this Asad. Asad and Abdul Rahim. Abdul Rahim? Naam. You know, Abdul Rahim, mashallah, he's 16, right? He told me earlier, he told me his story. He said he helped tutor some of the children. He's going to help, inshallah ta'ala. He's going to help tutor. I told him. I said to him earlier, I said, he graduated from the school here. He was like, he wants to study abroad. But I, he said, while, he, while he's here, he has some time. I said, you have to give back. One, you have to try and get in Nam. You're learning Islam amongst, in the masjid, but you have to go on and get some skills, whether it's college or whatever. And also you have to give back. True to these brothers. Education-wise, we want them sharp. Religious, we want them sharp. Physically, we want them sharp. We want them sharp in every way that they can. Why? Because you guys are the leaders of tomorrow. But you're only going to be able to fulfill the role if you are nurtured and educated correctly. We're not going to get that from Instagram. It's not about the gram. People be fronting all the time on the gram. If, if you just want life to be the gram, no. People on the gram, you go, you see them in real life, you'll be like, wow. He was pretending. No. Yes, if it gets on Instagram, we're not saying. But we want you to do it in real life. Because there's things that need to be done. That's what we want from the youth. That, alhamdulillah, you have change. Yes, real change. 
And if he makes it to social media, alhamdulillah, that's just a means and a tool. But we want real life to agree with what's going on there because sometimes social media, Instagram is like Hollywood for some people. You know? Not, not trying to prolong it, but since yeah. some of you here, boys and girls, are influenced by some of the things they're seeing on social media, TikTok and Instagram, and they're doing these dances and they're singing these songs and things that they're hearing on social media. Can you just maybe give them a word of advice about leaving these things off? Yeah, be influenced in the best way. Be influenced by good. Be influenced by positive things. Something's going to benefit your, your, your soul, your mind. You as your character, your children, your families, your brothers, stuff that's benefit. It's going to last. You know, ha take good, one of the ways that you, you know, you do good, you have good role models. Name for me a good role model. Yeah, I'll give it to you back. Name for me a good role model. Who's a good role model for you? Who do you, look, who do you think he's a good brother? I want to be like him. Father. My dad. Your dad, exactly. That's why I tell brothers and children that all the time. You know, your role model is, is your father that gets up to go to work and he comes home and he helps, he, you know, he provides for the household. You know, that, that's, a, that's, that's where you should you look at a role model as well. Yes, no doubt. What else? Give me... Uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, the prophets and the messengers, the best examples. Allah said about Prophet Muhammad specifically, you have the best example. Who else? Hassan Somali. Nah, Hassan Somali is miskeen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Ustad Raha. You know, alhamdulillah, you have many role models. Yes, alhamdulillah, the brother, look, he embraced Islam. That's, that, that, like I said, that doesn't mean any of us. When you, you say in Hassan Somali, we're not perfect. You, again, may Allah forgive us for our sins. The Prophet taught us a supplication. Prophet Muhammad taught us. Allahumma inni zalamtu nafsi dhulman kathira. For us to say, oh Allah, I wrung my soul greatly. No one forgives sins except for you. Forgive me with a forgiveness from yourself and have mercy upon me. You, God, are all forgiving, most merciful. SubhanAllah, Prophet Muhammad taught us to say that. So that's deep. At the end of the day, we have shortcomings. But again, yes, alhamdulillah, we have many role models, good role models. Yes, you see somebody, alhamdulillah, they, they are role modeling good. And you have, like I said, so many small things. None of you should look down upon good. None of you. Like small things, and I was saying to the brothers before, you may do something small and the reward is great. It might just be a word that you say to somebody and that benefits that person their whole life and they remember it. Or just the fact that you just prayed. Growing up, subhanAllah, Prince Nassim, I used to see him, you know, I, I've seen him live as well. I heard him say, you know, Allah is the greatest. He'd be like, subhanAllah, he's, look, he's saying Allah is the greatest. He's saying, la ilaha illallah. Even in the walk of life that he's in, no doubt, and our role models are the prophets, the messengers, the scholars of Islam, now I'm the righteous, and so on and so forth. But small things, we never look down upon them. Everyone has a role. Everyone has a role. All right? Remember that. Jazakum Allah khair. We'll stop there, inshallah. Barakallah feekum.